Breaking the Chains by Compass Games. Here we are with the um, full 30 turn campaign game underway and I've done the first turn. Um, don't know how much detail to go into, obviously with 30 turns, a turn by turn kind of thing, a summary is going to be very difficult to do. But anyway, I just thought um, we'd drop in after the first turn. Um, to see how things went and it was pretty quiet um, because both sides had set up quite defensively for fear of uh, cruise missile strikes and being in the in range of very dangerous air power there wasn't a great deal of interaction between between the two sides the US kept their forces well out of the way of trouble during the turn Japan moved its fleet away from Japan because it has transports that could prove useful um, for forces on the US mainland and Hawaii, which they want to get into the action. Um, the First Island Coalition also has plans to, to try and pick up some uh, American SAM defences and try and move them down here into the Philippines where th so that they can base air power down here more safely and therefore project uh, power over to the Spratlys which is where the Chinese look like they're going so you've got this the Chinese Navy out in force heading southwards. The major conflict of the first turn was between uh, China and Vietnam. The Vietnamese had large amounts of um, ground forces based in Hanoi and to the north of Hanoi and you can see there's nothing left. The reason is that um, Chinese um, surface to surface missile sites, they're actually in this box up here, but these surface to surface missiles units with the no LACM, they launched cruise missiles at the Vietnamese Air Force did four steps of damage to the six steps that they had available. Um, so the uh, Vietnamese sort of reformed what was left of their Air Force South down here in Ho Chi Minh City. You can see those SU-30s there. They've got a step loss on them. Uh, but what that meant then was that um, Chinese air power, you can see some there, there's some there. So these two stacks just kept rolling in and attacking ground striking everything that they could find and because these are multi-role fighters they get a bonus on their recovery dice they were rolling sixes or more to recover so they got four or five rounds of attacks most of these planes and you know with with six multi-role fighters and two bombers between these two stacks that was just dozens and dozens and dozens of attacks going into those um ground troops and the overall effect of all that bombing was this. These are the Vietnamese losses. Um, there's the uh, steps of the planes that they lost but then you can see seven infantry divisions there and an armoured, um, probably a brigade, maybe battalion, but anyway um, two-step units so we'll say it's a brigade I'm saying, I, I think I read somewhere although I can't find it, three-step units with the deltas are, um, are divisions and then two-step units which this would be since it's got no marking on it would probably be uh, brigades and then one-step units you'd say were battalions and they have an omega symbol anyway um, terrible losses there for um, Vietnam and the uh, the lesson learned from that would be that when you're setting this up um, keep as ma as many of your forces out of reach of the initial starting setup zones of the Chinese Air Force. So it might, even though you're going to lose Hanoi immediately, you're going to lose it a lot, le lot less painfully if you start uh, all your forces, all your ground forces down here and try and keep them out of um, strike range, at least for that initial turn. Um, because that's that's just losses for absolutely you know no gains whatsoever. Um, the Chinese didn't take didn't take a loss there. Um, 
it just cost them a couple of cruise missiles, which they probably have launched anyway. So there we are. Um, that's the first turn. Uh, American troops in the Indian Ocean were locked there by the play of a special ops chip. You can see that China-Persian play, which is keeping these um, uh, um, these naval forces uh, busy until they play uh, a countering chit of their own, which is actually here in game turn two. So we'll be coming out shortly and we'll unlock those forces, but that's why they didn't move a lot of the other American forces and Australian forces out of the Darwin box and San Diego and Hawaii boxes are now here on the turn track, slowly making their way to either Guam or Singapore. And I ran out of destination Guam counters, which is why there's nothing on there, but I know it is destination Guam. So there we go, that's the first turn. Um, we're coming into the black ops phase of turn two where the Americans will counter this Persian um, pl play um, and the Chinese will get the option to put some special ops into turn three. We'll get some more cruise missile strikes and then we'll be underway. Breaking the chains, second turn, first um, cycle or impulse, whatever you want to call it, they call them cycles here, so first of six cycles. And um, we're starting to get to the point where there's some confrontations. Um, the uh, main Chinese naval forces have moved down, they're getting very close um, to a hastily pull together um, Vietnamese uh, defence. Here, over here, the Thai Navy has moved to engage with um, Burmese forces, even though Burma hasn't technically joined in yet. The um, Thai uh, are going to preempt that, having lost a lot of their air force to um, cruise missile strikes from the Chinese. They're going to uh, get on and use it before the rest of it gets wiped out. So they are going to uh, engage. And uh, yeah, there's Chinese aircraft carriers now moving down here. The Chinese also moved two of their J-31 fighters in here, but that rebase puts, um, puts a, a recovery marker on them, so they now have to make a die roll to become active again. Um, and the Americans followed suit and rebased two F-35 squadrons. Uh, into the Philippines here um, to directly face up the uh, Chinese Air Force. So, um, yeah, it's escalating a little bit down here. Both sides um, rather wary that these um, air bases are very vulnerable to cruise missile strikes. Um, and so kind of planning to ship the aircraft back out, use it through a couple of cycles, recover it and ship the aircraft back out, at least that's the Americans plan. The um, Chinese plan is actually to move this um, Malaysian frigate uh, group with a air missile defence on it into this um, port and therefore have some AMD defence from uh, cruise missiles. Uh, that's their plan. So slightly more robust plan than the American uh, the Americans have. Longer term, the Americans have some uh, surface-to-air missile defences on a transport in here, which they'd like to bring down here through the Philippines and get located somewhere in this area, if they can. But uh, we'll see how that pans out. Anyway, let's do a strike just to, sh to show again, just to refresh um, how these mechanics work. So the Chinese have won the initiative um, for strikes and they are going to announce a, um, a strike into this hex. They've got uh, an aircraft carrier in here with some um, planes on it, and they are gonna fly down over here into this hex and announce a strike. So the first thing that happens is that these guys, um, well, actually we could look around and see if there's anything we can intercept, but the Chinese are doing doing it knowing full well that there isn't. Um, these are too far away, they're range three and it's 
just out of range, range 4. These guys still have a recovery marker on them. These um, Philippines fighters again, too far away. Americans uh, haven't recovered and too far away. No air support out here. So in light of that, the, uh, these Vietnamese uh, naval forces are going to try and evade. And the evasion roll is your stealth score plus the distance between your units and the nearest unit that's illuminating you, i.e. the one that's picking you up and tracking you and letting the attack be launched in the first place, which would be, where's the nearest enemy unit? This submarine only has a radius of one, so it isn't that that's illuminating them. So it would be actually the aircraft on the carrier or up here, this sub, like I was saying, don't know what I was pointing the camera at, that can't do it because that only illuminates a range of one. So it would be the aircraft on the carrier itself, which is one, two, three, four. So they've got plus four for the range of the illuminating aircraft. So they've got half a chance to evade here. So the Gepard is going to try and evade. Let's give him a roll. He's got two dice. Plus two, plus four. So two dice plus six. He gets a seven. And he has evaded successfully. And then we'll go to the Yantar frigate group. And that's got a stealth of one. Plus four for the range is plus five. So he's got two dice plus five. And he's got a seven. Two dice plus five is twelve. Um, and evasion requires a 12, results greater than 11 succeed. So both of these have evaded. That's great news for them, because otherwise they were going to get hammered by some extremely unpleasant uh, J31 firepower. As it is, what they get is an evasion marker. So let's drop a let's drop an evasion marker on them because it means they can't um, it, it means they can't now fire or launch attacks or strikes. Not that they've got any to do, but that's the rule. So we'll drop an evasion marker on them. We'll get used to doing it correctly. Brilliant. Now I'm fairly sure that that means the aircraft aren't launched and that we therefore don't mark the aircraft with. A recovery marker because there's no strike involved because there was a successful evasion um, it says uh, uh, that it says you have to mark air, air units that participate in any strike with a recovery counter as if it wasn't combat air patrol and there was no strike so they're not marked with recovery so the aircraft are free to do something else now it's over to the um, uh, First Island Coalition to announce a um, an engagement or to define an engagement that they want to take place. And they've got a couple of options. They've got the uh, Singapore Air Force down here that could take a pop at these ground forces. Um, here, we, we want to get shooting them. What we're actually going to do is this naval engagement over here, though. We've got... Um, We've got some Burmese naval forces here, and we want to shoot them up from here. So, are they going to stand and fight, or are they not? Let's have a look at that. Let me get them flipped over, and we'll have a look at all their values. Okay, so looking at this matchup, um, in here there are two... Burmese uh, units, some frigates, uh, and what are these? Don't know what FS stands for. Fast patrol craft or something, I don't know. Uh, should we look it up? No. Anyway, um, you can see their values on the back. Um, Anti-surface, two guns, two, torpedoes, one, submarine, one, and the other, the smaller one, the FS, has got um, uh, surface combat of one, and guns of one. Um, 
so, and I can't find FS anywhere. Uh, so, yeah. We're going to declare an, uh, a, um, an engagement with those guys. And they don't get to know what we're going to attack with. <clears throat> because we have naval forces here that could engage, which are within the two hex range for engagement. So, but equally, we have a stack of air power here that, yes, it's been shot up by cruise missiles, but it's still there and it can still engage. Um, so these guys now have to decide whether to evade or not. And they're both going to try and evade, much like um, our other craft did. So they've got a stealth of one, and the nearest, the range to the nearest unit illum illuminating them is two. These guys are illuminating them, so or spotting them, if that's the words you want to use. So they've got two dice plus three. They need twelves to evade. So the um, the frigate, the FFG, gets a ten and evades with a plus three, thirteen, and the other guy gets a 5 and does not evade. Okay, so we'll mark the frigate up with, a, with an evasion counter and that means we've now got some sort of um, coastal vessel, coastal defence patrol craft to target and now we get to choose what we want to engage it with, because I was thinking of going in with my aircraft, but given that it's stealth one and guns are uh, at uh, anti ship one, um, I think we might have a go uh, with our navy and try and polish it off that way and save our air. So let's um, let's engage it with things that are going to fire before it. So things that will fire before it is anything with um, a, a stealth higher than one. So this will fire before it, and anything with stealth higher than a stealth of one with guns of higher than one. And this has got stealth of one and a, sorry, an anti ship of higher than one. So this has got. Um, stealth of 1 and anti-ship of 2, so this will fire before it. What else have we got? We've got this thing, which has got stealth of 1 and anti-ship of 2. So these three will all fire before it. What have we got as our last unit in here? We've got, uh, this hasn't got any anti-ship at all, it's only got guns, needs to be in the same hex. So we won't use that. We'll engage with these three against this. And we'll hit it with our strikes. So we're going to hit with um, two dice plus two, and we're trying to beat six. This could be over very quickly. Let's have a shot here. That's a terrible one. Okay, so two dice, five plus two, seven does beat six, and that's a one. That's a step loss on this thing. And then this guy's got two dice plus two as well, and gets a seven plus two is nine beats six. That's three step losses on it, and that is all she wrote for that. This guy, I don't think. Fires. I'll have to check whether he has a fire marker, but he hasn't fired, so I'll check whether he has uh, takes any penalties for having participated. And the very quick answer, as far as I can tell, is no, it didn't participate in, any, in, in a strike, um, so it doesn't get a fired marker, and um, so it remains available for other missions, which you might say, well, what's it going to do? Well, there's a frigate that evaded, so we could uh, um, potentially, well, I don't think we can re-engage that, but we've also got some um, ground units that we could bombard, we could give them some shore bombardment. So we may well um, 
do some shore bombardment with our frigate that didn't fire. Huge stroke of luck here for the um, First Island Coalition. The Chinese attempted to engage this group here in the Spratleys, and this has actually got a transport, Vietnamese transport, with troops that are going to get dropped off in the Spratleys next, um, next cycle, um, which would have been sitting ducks for um, air power out of the um, out of these task forces. Every ship in there made its evasion roll. I mean, they were rolling with plus sixes, but the transport only with a plus four needed a twelve, rolled an eight, boom, evasion, perfect. And so uh, they're sitting pretty, and now they've got a range of options um, for the for their uh, engagements to declare because they could have a go. Like we said down here, are these Malaysian forces with the Singapore Air Force, they could. Uh, take a pop in here with some shelling some ground troops they've got uh, air power here and here that could uh, to strike things um, so yeah they've got uh, they've got some decisions to make just at the end <clears throat> end of the first general quarters phase here turn two in breaking the chains and just highlighting something um, which is how critical these recovery roles are on your aircraft. So obviously combat roles are super important, but then after those, these recovery roles for your air, air assets, the aircraft, just absolutely vital. If you've got <clears throat> unopposed air power, you've got pretty much free reign to attack things with no comeback whatsoever. Where there's con a contested you know, airspace, both sides have to be a lot more thoughtful and give a lot, you know, be a, mitigate the risks and take a lot more considered approach to what they're going to do. Um, so here we've got a situation where the um, where the Chinese have moved two two fighters in there, and the Americans have opposed that by moving two fighters in here. I've done the rest of the recovery roles. But these are pretty critical because if the Americans make their recovery rolls that with this range of four out of this hex, one, two, three, four, they can project interception all the way across the Spratleys so that as these carriers come in, if they start trying to put air power uh, to, into these um, units, which successfully evaded um, this turn, they'll be able to fly some intercept missions. And that's going to make the Chinese quite wary about putting their um, J-31s up. Unless, of course, these guys also um, recover. In which case, they've got a lot more options. Because they'll be able to have quite... They'll able, at least in some places, to put up, have air superiority. But in taking that, they're risking not making their recovery rolls. And then they're risking handing the initiative to the opponent if they if they've got planes without recovery roles so there's this real cat and mouse um, seesaw effect of whether you're willing to risk the recovery die rolls and well first are you willing to risk the combat secondly are you willing to risk the recovery die rolls and if you do put your planes out and the other guys let you then they're given the initiative so it's really quite a nice you know, a nice feeling system where it's got that cat and mouse operational feel to it. It's not just, oh, let's just throw everything in the mix and see how it comes out. So, yeah, there it is. Um, let's make these then. So these two um, Chinese planes, they're rolling 2D6. They've got a plus three because they're three-step multi-roll aircraft and they need more than eight. So they need nines. So sixes on two dice to recover. The first one gets... A nine and the second one gets a six and they are both the Chinese um, J31s make their recovery rolls all the uh, all the pressure now on the Americans and they get a nine for the first and a seven for the second plus three is ten and they both make their recovery rolls as well so everything in here so we've now got a classic sort of standoff where both the Americans and the um, and the uh, Chinese have significant air power down in this area, and who's going to who's going to send it up on a mission, 
and who's going to oppose what. Um, so yeah, that's really interesting. The other thing I wanted to raise just while I think of it is the system feels a lot like something that... Oh, I'm putting Malaysian planes on um, on American forces here. I'm messing it all up. So the system feels a bit like what I think... Uh, um, how I think Empire of the Sun, the... the, the um, the uh, card-driven game by GMT um, kind of handles operations. If I'm if I'm correct, and I've not played it, I do own it, but I've you know I've watched a bit of play and I've read the rules. I've not played it, but it seems in that game that you sort of define the attack the hex that you want to attack as a sort of mission hex, and then you call in all the resources that you're going to pile into that hex, and then you you resolve what happens. And this game uses exactly that system. So, you know, the the Chinese could say, okay, we're going to run a mission in here. And then these guys get to invade, evade, but assuming they don't evade, then the Russians start allocating resources into that strike. And then the defender starts going, well, hey, we can intercept with these planes and, oh, we could throw these boats in. And, and, and so, and then you, you know, figure out what, what all the outcomes are. And it's got that kind of operational planning feel, um, which I think is quite similar to Empire of the Sun, uh, which itself is regarded as something of a classic. So it shares that system in some ways, obviously without the cards. Um, but it, so far I'm really enjoying this. It's got a lovely feel to it, a nice look to it. And the only thing that I find slightly disconcerting is that some of these stacks get a bit large. Um, but, you know, can't be avoided. Um, and they w I think they would get larger if you seriously optimised what you were doing. You'd end up with monster stacks. But to, s but to some extent, these, these smaller stacks are a product of some laziness on my part, not wanting to do that.